Sometimes in our digital logic functions, we have outputs that are unspecified. They're not clearly a one or a zero because either they don't make sense or that input combination is never possible. Um, so let me show you an example of what I mean by an unspecified output. Um, so I wrote out here all of the inputs of um, a four input system. So this corresponds to decimal zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Um, so the example that I thought that would be interesting was suppose we wanted to design a system that encoded our birthdays in decimal. So your birth month is going to be sometime between January and December. Um, so that means we're going to need number one and we're going to need two, we're going to need three, and on and on until um, December is 12. So we need to be able to um, count up to 12. So we're definitely going to need four inputs because if we only had three, then we could only count up to seven. But we don't need these 13, 14, 15. Um, there are no months that exist out here. So this output is unspecified. So we're going to put an X here if we have an output that's not needed, unspecified, or doesn't really make sense. So for this particular example, it doesn't make sense. Another good example you can look into is the seven segment display, and we'll talk about that more later. Um, we also have an X up here because there's no zeroth month. We started January as the first month. So um, we say that these are unspecified, and these particular unspecified outputs we refer to them as don't cares, and they're denoted with this X. And we can actually put these on the truth table, and these are useful because we can use these in our Carnot maps for reductions. Um, so these don't cares, they can either be zero or one, depending on the groupings. Okay, so in other words, we can use them as ones for our groupings to make larger groupings, in other words, bigger simplifications, or we can just leave them zeros and we don't have to worry about grouping them at all. Um, so let me show you an example of um, how we can use don't cares to do a simplification like this and how you put them on the carnival. So here's an example. Suppose we want to simplify a function. Um, let's say our function has of inputs a, b, c, d, and it's given to us as a sum of min terms 4, 5, 6, 7, and 12, plus we're going to have some don't care conditions. And the notation for this that you'll see in a problem like this looks like this. It's a little d and then sometimes they'll tell you what the inputs are, right? So this is like function notation in terms of the inputs. So the little d stands for don't care, and this will be given to us as a sum. They're not really min terms, so you may not see a little m here, but this is gonna tell you the location of the don't cares, okay? Location on truth table or kmap of don't cares. Okay, cool, so let's put this into the k-map. Um, to make our four input k-map, I put a, b here on the left side, I put c, d above. My input combinations for a, b are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Same story for c, d, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And now, um, I know where the min terms map onto this k-map and we talked about that in the previous video, and I can use those same midterm locations to put x's where my don't cares are. Okay, great, so I know this is midterm 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to look at my um, list of midterms, and this is going to be where f is equal to 1. So I, f is going to be equal to 1 at midterm 4, that's here, 5 here, 6 here, and 7 is here, and then I have 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 is going to be this one. So um, 
if I don't have any don't care specified, then I would assume that the rest of these are equal to zero. But I do have don't cares, and these are the locations of my don't cares. So the zero min term, that's a don't care, so I put an x. And eight is, let's see, here, and 13 is here. Um, so you can look, if you need a refresher at the previous videos, for which min terms go where, min term 0, min term 1, min term 2, min term 3, and so on, to know where these locations are. Um, great, so now we're ready to do our groupings. The nice thing about this don't care and this don't care is now instead of a group here, I can now make a group of four using the don't cares. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Here's my group of four. Um, I already have a full group of four here horizontally in this row. So let me go ahead and mark that on here. That's going to be my green group. Now, um, this is an interesting situation because I've got a don't care here. So if I wanted to, I could make a group of four here in this square. Would I want to do that? The answer is actually no. So this is a case where um, I'm going to just pretend that the don't care is a zero. I've already grouped these ones into the green group, and I've already grouped these ones into the blue group. So having an extra group here with a don't care would be redundant and unnecessary because this does not require a grouping. The X's where the don't cares are do not require groupings, but you can use them to make bigger groups with ones that you already have. So that's the key. All right, great, so let's figure out what these groups are. For my blue group, what do I have? Um, I have that A can be either zero or one, and I'll have my ones in my group. B can be either zero or one, and I'll have ones. So if this spans the entire column, that basically means that A and B don't matter. So A and B are both either 0 or 1. Up here, C is 0 and D is 1 to make me like zoom in on this one column. So I have C is 0 and D is 0. I might have said 1, but I meant 0. So um, A and B get reduced out of my function and my literals are just C naught, D naught. Okay, great. So then my green grouping, um, to give me this row of ones, A is 0 and B is 1, and then C can be either 0 or 1, and I'll get these ones, so C is either, and D can be either 0, 1, 1, 0, and we'll get 1, so D can be either also. So anytime we have that uh, a literal can be either 0 or 1, that means we can reduce it out of the function because it doesn't contribute, it doesn't matter. So what does matter is that A has to be 0 and B has to be 1. So now what I do is I take my product terms that I just figured out from the k-map and I just add them together. So my reduced f, and I get to reduce from, I reduce from the k-map instead of using long tedious Boolean algebra, is just C not D not or A not B. Um, and I got to use the don't cares to do this simplification, so that helped me quite a bit. So let me know if you have questions about these don't cares and how to put them on the Carnot map and also the notation that you might see. And um, yeah, let me know. Thank you.